Yes, sir. Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast. I got Shea Monroe here. He's a high school coach in Alabama, and I just met him, but I know he is a football junkie. He loves it. I hit him up, and within five minutes, boom, he's on here, and we're doing the podcast. So Alabama football, Alabama high school football, that's some serious stuff. I'm from Virginia, Coach, and we have a lot of respect for Texas. We have a lot of respect for Alabama. So for the people that are watching that don't know who you are, Coach, uh, tell, tell the coaches uh, that are watching or will watch a little bit about yourself and where you're from, Coach. Yeah, I appreciate you, Coach. First off, I appreciate you having me on. You know, uh, anytime we get to talk about football and, and promoting our game is a, is a great day. Um, like you said, my name is Shay Monroe. Uh, I'm the head football coach at Asheville High School. Uh, we're a rural 4A school here in uh, East Alabama. Um, we're located about 50 minutes north of Birmingham. And uh, I'm originally from Loganville, Georgia. Um, uh, I played at high school football for a guy named Mickey Kahn, who's the co-defensive coordinator at Grayson High School or uh, at Clemson now, who was at Grayson High School. That's where I played. I was well, we want to we want to get him on next, Coach. Just hit okay. him up. All right, you I know. will. I'll, might I'll do, we to... might do him after we do you, Coach, because I know he – if he is at Grayson, he's legit. Yeah, he started the program at Grayson High School back in 2000 and, and was there until, I guess, 2015 or 2016. I can't remember. Then he moved to – went to Clemson uh, with Coach Sweeney there. But Yeah, you know, I don't uh, blame him. Yeah, I don't either. Um, but, you know, had a, had a really good high school experience, you know, um, was very fortunate to be impacted by uh, a lot of coaches growing up. And, um, you know, I knew when I was 10 years old that I wanted to be a high school football coach. You know, never really had the, the bug to to coach college. Um, you know, I just – I always thought, like, high school football was the, the level you could make the biggest impact on kids. Um, that's where I was very, very impacted. But um, how actually how I ended up in Alabama was I went to Jacksonville State University um, <clears throat> here, worked with the football program for five years in a lot of different capacities, started off as a, um, a volunteer film guy, you know, just to try to get my foot in the door, um, you know, and I did that for a year. And and um, I'll never forget it. I was out filming two a day practices in the Alabama heat and our, the offensive line coach at the time was a guy named Adam Ross who's now the offensive line coach at, at Richmond. Yeah, he's at Richmond. I know yeah. him. So, uh, Coach Ross, I was I was coming down from the lift, and uh, he noticed I didn't have, a like, a team-issued shirt on. And he was like, you know, hey, make sure you go to the equipment room after practice and, and get your shirt. Well, we kind of struck up a, a bond, and, um, you know, one thing led to another, and then I ended up helping out, helping him out for a couple of years and, and then worked for a guy named Max Thurman who's uh, on the on the staff at the University of Tennessee now and um, had a great experience with Coach Thurman and then uh, a guy named Jimmy Ogle. Coach Ogle until this year was at – I mean, he was at Jacksonville State for 23 years in a lot of different capacities. But, man, just had a great, great experience in college football. And um, so my coaching journey after after I left high – or after I left college, um, I moved back to Georgia for a year. And, and right before I moved back, I met a woman, Coach. And uh, that woman's now my wife. Uh, we have, we have two beautiful children together and, um, you know, was, uh, in, in South Georgia or middle Georgia for a year at Dublin high school, working for a, uh, Georgia high school football coaching legend named Roger Holmes. Um, anybody who knows anything about the wing T coach Holmes is a, is a, uh, hmm. great resource to go talk to about the wing T. So, uh, learned a lot, you know, learned a lot about football in that one year with coach Holmes and. And just decided, you know, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna marry this girl, and and I'm gonna move back to Alabama, and um, you know, was very fortunate uh, to end up at Lincoln High School with Brad Wallace, was his offensive coordinator there for uh, for three years, and then you know, man, just kind of bounced around for a little while, took a took a head coaching job at a private school in in North, uh, in uh, East Alabama, Westbrook Christian. And uh, wasn't there very long. Actually, only made it there seven months. Um, was, uh, you know, um, but that's neither here nor there. And uh, been in Asheville High School for five years, two years as an offensive coordinator, and now just finished my third year as the head coach. So I know it's a long, long way around, man, but, you know, very fortunate to be around a lot of, a lot of good people. Heck, yeah. You, you've done coach with some, some legends, and that's awesome, man. I mean, it, 
you know, that kind of makes you who you are. But you told me a cool story um, before we came on air. Tell, tell that story about um, when you, you coached your first game as a head coach. That was great, man. Yeah, so, um, you know, coach asked me before we came on, he said, you know, what's kind of your your thing as a head coach? I mean, as a coach, and, and you know, I'm kind of thinking, well, my first game as a head coach, we're playing at home, and it was the COVID year. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we were just thankful to be playing football. And I mean, y'all play in the fall or spring? We played in the fall. We okay, we played in the, in the spring. Okay, so yeah, we played in the fall, and you know, my first game as a head coach, and we were playing um, Oak Grove High School, just uh, you know, outside of Birmingham, and uh, their head coach was a first year guy as well. So it was kind of you know, and, and you know, Coach Glaze did a really good job with them, um, and so <laughs> I told Coach before, you know, my first game as a head coach, I'm calling plays in the first half. So, like, I'm just, you know, I'm kind of – I'm not doing a very good job because I'm worried about everything. I'm trying to call plays, and I'm worried about everything else. Well, at halftime, I made two adjustments, okay? I moved our best running back to fullback, and I fired myself from calling plays. Hmm. And our offensive line coach called every play, um, you know, and um, that was that was something that our team needed. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, but it was something our team needed for me to do. And and you know we had a five and five season my first year. And, and people say, well, that's you know that's a five hundred season. You didn't go to the state championship. You didn't go to the playoffs. Well, you know you got to understand. At Asheville High School, I was the seventh coach they hired in fifteen years. So a lot of turnover, and it was actually the first time they'd had a season of five hundred or better since 2005 so it'd been 15 years since they'd had a season where they hadn't had a losing season so yeah. you know people say and, and we didn't have one COVID forfeit the whole year um, we played all 10 games you know so we were very fortunate and we had six seniors my first year and man you know can't thank those guys enough for for the foundation they laid for our program so uh yeah man it was uh it was definitely the best decision I made probably so you hang your hat on relationships. And I've had – I think I've had two coaches in the last week talk about this. So, like, what does that mean to you? Because one of the guys talked about intentional relationships. I've never heard of this because I I don't have unintentional relationships. Right. I mean, I just talk to people and hit them up. And, I mean, I'm sitting here. I've done almost 90 podcasts in 30 days. And I don't, I don't know if I'm any good or I'm just stupid. Um, what does that mean to you to build relationships? Well, I think, you know, kids are, you know, I, I'm kind of under the assumption people say, well, kids are different. Well, I just think a lot of the times adults ruin it for kids. You know, do I think you can talk to the same with the kids the same way you did 20 years ago? No, you know, but you kind of got to get on their level, so to speak. You know, um, I remember, you know, I'm 35 years old. OK, I've been coaching for I've been coaching high school football for 11 years. OK, now as a 24 year old coach, I probably wasn't very good at building relationships. OK, you know, I feel like in the last you know five years, I've gotten a whole lot better at it, you know, and I'm not going <clears> to <throat> sit here and bore you with a lot of things. But to me, you know, building a relationship with a kid is not what you only talk to him about on the football field. It's, hey, how's everything off the field? Hey, is there anything you need? You know, how's everything at home? You know, hey, what you know, constantly checking on their grades. Because people say, well, you know, we check their grades and they don't really check their grades. I'm I'm trying to stay on top of my kids' academics because the school I'm at, we don't have a ton of kids that are going to college that are on my football team. A lot of our kids are picking up a trade, which is great. That's something the world needs. Yeah, okay. make a lot more money than me. There ain't no doubt. And, Coach, I mean, like, I can't fix my car. You know, I can't – I mean, I can barely do anything in my house. That's why I call people and pay people to do those things. And, you know, and – but it's important that these kids understand that, you know, you can take anything away from you, but you can't take away an education. All right, here we go, man. Jared, our guy, Coach Monroe, sign up for his clinic. <laughs> so you have a clinic. I do. I do. I like I like clinics. <laughs> yeah. we. Uh, I, I, I'm Mr. Clinic. I've been to every clinic on the <laughs> East Coast. I even had my own clinic, and it became a podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it, it, the podcast now has got 8089, oh, and you're the 90th speaker. The okay. 90th speaker hey, in a month. It's, uh, it's a lot better because it, this is up forever. So, Jared, tell me about Jared. How do you know Jared? And sports workbook. Yeah, Those guys are the best. I they just are. Met they, them. 
They are just like I think just like everybody else. I saw their product on Twitter and and man just thought it was really cool. Thought it was uh, you know, something very practical for football coaches. And and you know, the thing is you don't have to necessarily be going to a clinic to use a sports workbook. You know, you can be, I mean, just like we are just sitting in front of uh, you know, I'm on my phone right now and and you know, I can pull up any any college film on YouTube and and just sit there and study it. Man, I think it's an awesome tool to to help coaches, but you know, we ordered some some workbooks from them this year for our clinic. Okay, it'll be uh, the sixth year doing the Alabama Spread and Defensive Clinic, and we've we've done it in Birmingham for six years, and and man, just have a great time. And, um, you know, it's a it's a page I took out of Coach Holmes's, uh, Coach Roger Holmes when I worked for him at Dublin. Coach yeah. Holmes has a big uh, wing T clinic down in Dublin every year. And man, so what's had- the name of your clinic? Because I'm going to put it in here, Coach. On the- yeah, it's the, it's the Alabama Spread and Defensive Clinic. See, if I'd have been smarter when when I started, you know, doing the clinic, I would have shortened the name. But that's I, okay, Coach. That's okay. I, I call mine the Championship Football Coaches Clinic. They say, Troy, you ain't got no championships, but you call it the Championship <laughs> Football Coaches Clinic. Well, maybe this will help you win a championship. And I helped Highland Springs win one. They beat me in the regional championship. Ain't nobody beat them, Coach. Hey. They need to go down to Alabama and play some people. Hey, man. Yeah, shoot. Hey, we so, got Coach, you got you, down here. Yeah, your clinic. Mm-hmm. Um, is there a website that I can pull up the speaker list and we can go through, Coach? Because I mean, I think that's it's good publicity for you. It's good publicity for your clinic. It's good publicity for everybody, man. Is um, can I pull it up on my phone? I mean, on my laptop. Yeah, you sure can. Okay, uh, just would it be easier to go to Twitter or what? Yeah, just go to Twitter. Go to your Twitter. Go to the yeah. Go to the Twitter. Yep. And then type in Spread Clinic. I got it. Spread Clinic founder. That's you. Yep, that's me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to present my screen. This is great because I've been getting guys with clinics to come on and talk about their clinics because it's good publicity, and it's good publicity for our, uh, our clinic, which is a podcast. All right, so, Coach, can you see it? Yeah, I can. Okay, let me – how does it look, Coach? It looks, it looks all good. right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Good. So just just talk us through it, Coach, and I'll go down. You know, so basically what we do is we try and get a lot of a lot of guys that a lot of high school guys, and you know we do sprinkle some college guys in there from time to time, but you know a lot of guys I want to expose the the great football coaches that we have um, in the South and uh, primarily primarily in the state of Alabama, you know, and and we've got a lot of great football coaches in the state of Alabama. Um, Coach, if you'll click on some of the pictures there over here on the right. Like, Yes, sir. Okay, there's a there's a copy of our, our sports workbook. Man, and, that is first class. Yeah, and they are a sponsor of ours. Them and Rack Coach. They did and, a great job with them. Coach, you're going to receive a, a free OC or DC um, book from them. You just hit them up, and they're going to tweet out your name. That's they really hooked me up, dude. So there you go, Coach. There's your defensive, uh, offensive. Yeah. I'm sorry, offensive clinic. Yeah. So offensive speakers this year, you know, very. Very proud of our um, of our group of guys that we got speaking. You know, Josh Franklin's a guy at, at Vestavia Hills High School who who uh, man, they're doing a lot of great stuff there this year with their with their pace and and what they do formationally. So he's going to talk about you know their pace and how they practice. You know, they do a lot of good things in the past game as far as moving the pocket. And man, they've done they've done some things RPO wise that that I haven't seen a lot of high school coaches in in Alabama do. So that's those are the three things he's going to be talking about. And so he's going to have three sessions. Yeah, he's, he's going to be going sessions. from eight. He's going to go from six. He's going to go from six that uh, Friday evening, the twenty fourth, and then he's going to finish at eight thirty five. Okay, right on. Yeah, and then so um, we're actually having it at a high school, so you know, kind of limited that first day because kids are getting out of school, so you can't really yeah. have a lot that first day. But Saturday, we're going to kind of go all day. So Drew Phillips is a guy who's uh, took over at West Morgan High School. Hold on, coach. Hold on, coach, can we talk about this social? Yeah, <laughs> I, want to, I want to know what what exactly is, does this involve, or can we not talk about that? Well, it's just a lot of you can well you can kind of fill in the blanks here, coach. But it's just going to be a lot of fellowship and you know yeah. coaches. So is you, it going to be at a local wings restaurant? That's well, a family restaurant. Yes. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm absolutely. a big fan. That's John Gruden loves that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, but, brother. Yeah, we, yeah we're gonna so, have fun on this thing, man. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you didn't know what you were getting into. Did no, you? I have no clue. Yeah, session two. We got yeah. Drew. Who's Drew, Coach? Drew, Drew Phillips. Drew, Drew Phillips just finished his second year at West Morgan High School, and 
And, um, you know, Drew's kind of really flipped the script over there at West Morgan. Um, you know, they they were a program that hadn't had a, you know, they'd had some good years and, you know, but I mean, they were kind of down when he took over and, and I'm not sure what he finished his first year, um, you know, so I don't want to speak, but I know this year he, you know, made, he won, a, he won 10 or 11 games this year and, and had a great team. And, I mean, I've just always been really impressed with, with his coaching and, and what kind of person he is, man. He's a, he's a first class guy and um, he's going to be talking about the duo play. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I got to say something about the duo play coach. Do you know who invented the duo play? No clue. His name is Jim McNally. Jim and McNally. I told you. Your boy. Yeah. Your boy. Because I invented that. The cool clinic. I invented that. Yeah. He, he invented the duo play. You know, he is a friend of mine. I've known him uh, eight days, coach. I've known him eight days. I got him on Twitter, like I told you beforehand. Mm -hmm. uh, my greatest feat in 24 years of coaching is teaching Jim McNally how to use Twitter. <laughs> coach, it has changed the world. I mean, people are going viral because of Coach McNally. That I is mean, it was something that the Lord wanted to happen, and mm -hmm. he just brought us together. You know, it was divine intervention, man. The Lord was at work, and we got him on Twitter, and it's changed the game. I mean, people are being exposed, and he came out with the duo play. He invented it. And, Coach, he is going to be on the clinic tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 9 o'clock to you guys in Alabama, right? Uh, Eastern? No, 8 o'clock Eastern. Y'all are Central. Yes, we're Central. So that'll be seven o'clock for y'all. That's right. Coach, I got him on two hours and it's going to be live. They can ask questions. I need okay. you to let all the coaches in Alabama know because my guys at Sports Workbook said, Troy, you need to get hooked up with the Alabama high school coaches. So here we go, man. I man, mean, I don't cool. even know what I'm doing, man. The, <laughs> the, the Lord's never led me wrong, man. There's, but the duo play. Great, there's a lot of great coaches in the state, man. Oh, I, man, I'm, I'm excited to get to know y'all, man. Uh, what we got, what's he talking about next coach? So, uh, Clint Humphreys will be our next speaker. So Clint's actually, um, uh, you know, I get, I get some crap about this from time to time, but you know, Clint is, um, Clint's a, a fantastic guy and he's a fantastic young coach. Yeah. Uh, and so Clint's the offensive coordinator at XL high school in South Alabama and Clint's a, Clint's a, they run the single wing on offense. Well, people say, well, why do you have a single wing guy coming to the spray clinic? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's just your interpretation of what you consider spread. You know, to me, spread is if you are in the shotgun more than yeah. the majority of the time, you're spread to me. Okay. What kind of spread? You know, don't try and put a label on it. Okay? Yeah. It's you football. Know, it's yeah, snap exactly. it to a guy and he runs it. Exactly. So, you know, really excited to have Coach uh, Humphreys on and, and talk about their single wing. Man, had a – had a great year this year. Um, we're six and four their first year there, and then won the first region championship there this year, the first time in a long time. So he's going to be talking about their single wing. Um, we're going to have a lunch break after that, and then uh, we'll come back with Matt Malone, who's the offensive coordinator at Andalusia High School. They won the 4A state championship this year. Nice. Um, got a really, really great program at Andalusia. Excited about having Coach Malone on. And then uh, we're going to wrap up with uh, Scott Kurd, who's the offensive line coach at Shorter University in Rome, Georgia. But um, Scott was actually a uh, – he's a retired high school football coach from the state of Alabama. Is so, he? Yeah, he is. And and after he retired, he he went down and was a, uh, like an offensive analyst for UAB um, and was there for a couple of years for Bill Clark. Um, and, uh, you know, so very, very excited to have Coach Kurd, man, just a first-class human being and – and a great guy. So decided to have those guys, man. And, you know, as much credit as the, you know, the offensive offensive coaches speak, man. I mean, our defensive coaches always seem to bring their A game. And, and you know, for the past six years, you, you have more – I would probably say the attendance in the defensive room is is bigger than the attendance in the offense. Wow. So you that ain't your whole clinic. You got more. Yeah, yeah. So Wow, man. We, we have Here two we on simultaneously. And um, – Awesome. Yeah, Matthew Forrester from Briarwood Christian. He's been the head coach there for, for four or five years now. And uh, Coach Forrester was the defensive coordinator there for a long time before then. Man, like just brilliant, really smart football coach. Does a lot of good stuff. They're a 4-3 defense, and, man, they do a lot of really good stuff out of the 4-3.
very multiple. And then Houston White's the the defense coordinator at Ringgold High School in North Georgia, and he's you know the kind of the the craze right now is um you know is is you know three high safety defenses. And, you yeah. know that's I'm I'm excited to learn more about because um you know just to kind of see how they do things and you know excited about coach. He was a college coach for a little while and then transitioned into high school. And then um you know we're gonna Corey Lee's a, a defensive coordinator has been around the state for a long time. He's at, at Prattville High School down close to Montgomery and and his topics are, are Prattville's really cool. legit. Yeah, they yeah. are. They got well, good- I, I know they used to be. I, I mean, but yeah. I, I know that name. I mean, I'm in Virginia and I know Prattville. Yeah, they still got a really good program, and and he's going to speak two topics on. Uh, and this is something that I thought was pretty unique, um, is building a universal defense to fit year, yearly personnel changes. Mm-hmm. And that high school coach, you know, you always got to do what fits your kids, what you think fits your kids. So I'm I'm excited about hearing that, and then. Uh, after lunch, Brandon Herring, who's the the strength and conditioning coach at Hewitt Trustful, close to Birmingham, will be speaking, and um, you know, just some some things that kind of break up the, I guess the uh, thing of just regular football talk. Yeah. Um, you know, get a, a strength and conditioning coach in there, and then uh, we're going to wrap up with Baron Chandler, who's the defense coordinator at West High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. They were the they were state champs this year in Tennessee, and nice. He's going to talk about some stuff. So, man, just really excited about our lineup this year of speakers and the things they're going to kind of bring to the table. Um, let's march. You got more. Uh, that might just be a reprint of what I already. Oh told. man, I'm 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 really impressed, man. Golly, man, I I'm just lucky. I mean, <laughs> to be able to get you on and Coach Bald said, "Great combo of talented coaches." Coach Bald, he's the guy. If you go look on our channel, he's the guy that's got the million dollar back the backyard right okay. on the water at St. Pete, the Tampa Bay. He coached Isaiah Wynn who starts oh, really. Yeah. For the yeah, Patriots. Coach, and he's, and he coached the Griffin twins. You know, that? Um, they yeah. used to be in they the were. NFL and they're all from Lakewood. He coached those guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Coach. So yeah. Um, is there anything else about the clinic um, that you would like guys to know? Where can they go sign up? How much is it? Do you have a staff rate? Anything like yeah. that? Hotel coach, anything? Yeah, we do. Um, and everything's on, on my Twitter page. Uh, I, I'll put it up, Coach. You want me to put your Twitter page? Yes, if you don't mind. Okay. So that was – is it the clinic page or is it your page? Uh, you can go to the clinic page. Okay, I'm on the clinic page. I just got to share it, Coach. Yeah. Man, did you even think about talking about the clinic? No, not really. I mean, wow. I'll be honest, I didn't know what we were going to talk about. Yeah, I didn't either, Coach. I don't ever know. I don't write nothing down. I'm like Lil Wayne and Jay Z. There you go. Hey, man. That's, right off the dome, two man. Good ones. that's two good ones to model it after. Heck yeah, that's my favorite, man. All right. So, where do I go now, Coach? So, what you'll do is like there's a pin tweet at the top. Yes, sir. All right. So, it has it our schedule. And um, there's a link underneath it. It's eventcreate.com slash E slash come to Bama spread. Yes, sir. You know, spread. That's sweet. So this is a website. This is Eventbrite. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's man. Event, yeah, it's Event Create. Not a, it's, uh, so we have a register button on there, and it's actually pretty cool. So we have a, just a singular coach's clinic pass. If you want to click on the register tab at the top, Coach. At the top? Yeah. So look, coach me up. Like if Coach McNally wants to do a private clinic, could we just do Event Create and then give people like a, a private um, link from their, to their email? Coach, I'm going to be 110% honest with you. I have a guy on my staff named Nick Wilson who's fantastic doing yeah. this stuff, and he does all this for me. Okay, cool. All right, so you have a singular coach's clinic pass at the top. It's $55. Mm-hmm. Okay, and, and that get you know, obviously you do all that. And then we have a staff clinic rate. It's $250, so you can bring five coaches or more. So you could bring, you know, 25 coaches from one school for 250 bucks if you wanted to. And then we have a one day pass. You know, we have a one day pass and and then a vendor registration pass. So I mean we got several different options. Okay. And and you know what we've kind of always done is we've always recorded these mm-hmm. kind of sold them after the clinic. And that's something we're planning on doing again this year. We've actually used to live stream them. Um but that's just got to be so much of a hassle. Because yeah. you're always so like you're always so worried if the internet's going to go out and you know, but we're actually going to do it at Spain Park High School this year. It's, that's in Hoover, Alabama. Okay, mm. it'll be March twenty fourth and twenty fifth. You know, very, uh, very fortunate to have Coach Tim Bacakis 
Uh, the head coach at Spain Park agreed to let us do it there, and, and very fortunate, uh, you know, very thankful to him for letting us do it. But man, just really excited about our lineup, and you know, just everybody that's that's came to this. You know, we we've, we've been like I said, doing it six years. This will be our sixth year doing it now, and uh, you know, man, we we've just kind of gotten to where, you know, I've I've become really good friends with the guys who attend this clinic. Yeah, you know, and just the people that come and 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 want to just make this a part of their yearly, you know, professional learning is, uh, you know, it's just pretty, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. And I, I'm very impressed with Alabama football. So the high school coaches that are watching in Virginia, I mean, we always talk about Alabama football and we watched Hoover on two a days and everything, but what, what can you tell us about the history of Alabama high school football? And, I mean, you got Alabama there. You got Auburn um, universities. Can, what can you tell us about the history of high school football in Alabama? Like, Texas has got Friday Night Lights and everything. Yeah. But what 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 do y'all kind of hang your hat on? What are y'all proud of? Well, I think I think the people of, of Alabama are very proud of. A lot of the schools in Alabama are community schools. So, you know, it's a big deal to the people in those communities. You know, you have your big cities. You have Huntsville, Birmingham, Montgomery, Mobile. Um, you know, and football is ultra important in those areas. But, you know, it's the it's the small communities and the small towns that that make it pretty awesome, just like everywhere else, I would assume, coach. And and, uh, you know, people here, like you mentioned, you know, we're uh, we're big time now. We got a USFL team. OK, the Birmingham Stallions. And who's uh, the head coach of the Birmingham? Clint, who's the head coach? My, one of my assistant coaches in here. Clint, who's the head coach? Of, oh, is it Skip Holtz? Yeah. Skip Holtz. Nice. Yeah, Skip Holtz. Um, nice. So, you know, it's. um. You know, but like you said, you know, like you referenced, there's no professional outside of now the USFL. There's no professional football in Alabama. So, I mean, you know, you go into college and everybody's either diehard Alabama or diehard Auburn. But, man, the high school football in this state, I would put it, you know, against any high school uh, football in the country. I oh, mean, yeah. I, I really would because, you know, we don't have the population that some of the other states might have. But I think I saw something not too long ago. Per capita, Alabama's like one of the biggest as far as putting guys in the NFL. Yeah, it's so. Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana, and Georgia, and all where the SEC is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, so, so football's a big deal. And, and I mean, um, you know, high school athletics in general in the state of Alabama is a big deal. Not just football, but basketball, baseball, softball, uh, track. I mean, all the, all the people in Alabama love their high school athletics. Being from Alabama, like in Virginia, we got Virginia and Virginia Tech, and I'm neutral. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm for the I'm for Virginia. I'm a homer. I'm I'm a Virginia guy. You know, how is it in Alabama being a high school coach? I mean, can you have a favorite between Auburn and Alabama? Uh, gosh, I mean, yeah, that's these guys do. Like I said, I'm I'm originally from Georgia, so I root for Georgia. And man, sometimes it gets pretty brutal being you know, on one side of the fence or the other, you know, like, um, you know, our staff's kind of split. I would say our staff's more, our staff's more Auburn than, than Alabama because we have some, a few Auburn alums on our staff and, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, man, it gets brutal when those two teams playing anything, you know, the, uh, the office dialogue can get pretty ramped up pretty quick. So, uh, you know, when that, when the iron bowl week comes and we all gather together after, after that game, it, it can get pretty, pretty heated in here. Yeah, uh, Gene Chizik, he he came yep. on the clinic, and you know he told the high school relations guy at UNC that he might be able to do fifteen minutes, mm -hmm. and he did an hour and fifteen. Gene oh, Chizik's oh. dad was a high school coach in South Florida, or t I, I don't know, it's all South Florida to me, <laughs> but he was a high school coach, and Gene Chizik spent an hour and fifteen minutes on this clinic with me, man, and I didn't know him. But I am a big fan for life of Gene yeah. Chizik. And, you know, he made a good point. There's been three different coaches uh, since him. And, you know, I, I never thought that they would ever find a better coach than um, Gus Malzahn. I mean, golly, man, I love Gus Malzahn. I mean, do high school coaches have a better record against Nick Saban than <laughs> college coaches? <laughs> I, I, I mean, Gus Malzahn, Hugh Freeze. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they beat them more than anybody. I mean, uh, who else is there? Texas A&M yeah. used to beat them when they had Johnny Money. 
Right. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. That's a great. That's a great point. Um, I don't know. Is maybe- it because of the fast speed and the you know the like backyard style football? Um, I, that he, he has trouble with. Coach, I'll tell you this. If I could answer that question, maybe I'd be coaching on Saturdays. But I don't. I don't know if I, the coach. I don't know. That's a great point. I definitely think you got to be outside the box to beat Alabama. You know. I, I mean. I couldn't tell you the last time a, a team just traditionally lined up and, and whooped Alabama. I mean, you know, that's just – I mean, I'm not really thinking about it, but, you know, a team that just lined up and, and traditionally, you know – It might have been Georgia, but I don't even know if Georgia beat them. I mean, but then been, they had to throw the ball. Yeah. I mean, was that the yeah. last time they beat them? I can't think. I don't know. Yeah, Georgia – the first time Georgia beat Alabama since 07 was in the national championship last year. With Tua. No, it was uh when Bryce Young in Indianapolis. Yeah, that's right. That, yeah. that was their that was first, first one because yep. yeah, because they because Alabama beat Georgia because of Tua yep. and Devontae Smith. I forgot. I was thinking Yeah, I get I get I get great uh text messages um every February twenty sixth since that game because it was second and twenty six, the the down distance he threw that touchdown pass to Devontae Smith. And what was it cover two? And they it was a wheel yeah. route. Yeah, it was like trap coverage, and then the the safety just didn't go to over the top, and they just threw it over the top of the whole player. I mean, and the the cover two safety, and it was like, good gracious! And it was yeah. it's it took a little while to get over as a Georgia coach. Coach might have had his um won the Heisman Trophy. It was it was a little bit easier to get over. Yeah, you you cut out there for a second. I don't know why, yeah, coach. I had um, a phone, and I'm sorry. You had a phone call. Yeah. Okay. I had uh, I had Tom McDaniel's. Mm-hmm. He's the he's the dad of Josh McDaniel's, mm-hmm. uh, the coach of the Raiders. He came yeah. on and spoke for two hours, and uh, it ended with, "Hey, I'm getting a phone call. Hey, this is Josh. <laughs> I got to take this." So I was like, "Hey, man, you no. know, Josh McDaniel's Josh- is calling you. Go ahead." Oh, he ain't calling me. So yeah. So, um, coach, you know, thinking about Alabama and Bear Bryant and Auburn, but you're a Georgia guy. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah, so you're a Georgia guy. I yeah, mean, I'm from Georgia. I can't help. It. I mean, yeah, golly, I, I guess you got to hook me up with the Georgia coaches too, because <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm just working my way, uh, I guess, from Texas back towards Virginia. Yeah, but man, I'm I'm telling you, um, yeah, I'm I'm really happy uh, that you came on and you got to talk about the clinic and, um, you know, talk about building relationships. I mean, is there anything else? Um, before we get off here, Coach, that you would like to say to the coaches about your program um, that's watching or will well, watch? I don't know if I necessarily want to talk about my program, but, you know, I want to encourage every high school football coach for them to know whether you went 15-0 and 0 or 0-10 last year, man, just keep on keeping on. Just, just, man, you need to be in it for the kids, and that's what this game's about. It's about teaching these young men life lessons and building young men into, you know, great husbands, great fathers, and – and that sort of thing, and, and you know, productive members of society. Because I think right now, you know, football is the, the one thing that teaches young men about all that. You know, teaches them about persevering, about, you know, getting hit in the chin and come back up. So I don't necessarily want this to be about me. You know, I know we, we have been talking about me and, and, and this clinic and all this stuff. But, man, just if you're a high school coach listening to this, man, just keep on keeping on. You know, just stay the course, believe in what you believe in. You know, coach those kids up, man, but love them. Love the crap out of them, man. That's something that those kids will always remember. They may not always remember their, their record or who they beat in the first round of the playoffs or in the state championship game, but they're going to remember how you how you treated them. So, yeah. you know, that's that's something to, to, you know, be after their hearts, man. Yeah, but there's a couple things I want to say about that. You know, Mike Spencer, who was the only guy from St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale to go to Alabama until recently. I think they they had a guy go, but he he got recruited by Bruce Arians to go play for a Bear Bryant. He told me um, I met him at Virginia Union University. I coached with him, and he uh, he told me, Troy, how do you show somebody you love them? And I was like, well, how? And he said, time and attention. Mm-hmm. So. You know, that, that's the one thing I learned. And then love, if you want to make someone fall in love with you, there's one place you can touch them and drive them crazy, and that's their heart. Mm-hmm. So, like you said, um, UVA's head coach, Tony Elliott, 
he talks about don't coach their talent, um, coach to their heart. So that's like the same thing you're preaching, you know. Do you yep. consider coaching to be your ministry? I think so. I think so. You know, it's definitely something that I enjoy, but it's, you know, seeing that kid, you know, maybe get a little bit better on the field, but how he acts off the field is very important to me. And, you know, what kind of steps is he, become, you know, taking to become more mature? Those are all things that, you know, um, you know, don't ask me if I'm a good coach by my wins and losses. Ask me if I'm a good coach. Well, I'll find out 20 years from now. Mm. How did it turn out? You know, so I think, you know, I think that's fair to say that, um, you know, it is, you know, it's part of who we are. I try not to get my, my identity lost in the fact that I am a coach because before that, I'm you know, I'm a husband and a father. So, um, you know, but I, I think that's safe to say. Well, you know, Coach, you know, I've only known you for uh, 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been talking for 36 minutes. And, you know, I know that you have your priorities, you know, straight. Faith, uh, family, and then football. Some coaches, they get it mixed up, and it, it gets them all messed up. And I've done it myself. You know, I sure. put football before my family, and, you know, it cost me. So, you know, it, it's very inspiring to meet a young coach who is being a leader in the profession by putting on this clinic and, you know, promoting the game and Twitter. I mean, Twitter, how many Twitter followers do you have, coach? I'm not sure. Uh, I, that's a good question. I don't really know. Um, I don't know. But two, three, four thousand. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I think Twitter's a great thing from a, you know, from a standpoint of man, it connects you with a lot of great people connect me with you coach. And, had the privilege to come on here and, and talk about this great game. Um, but, you know, it's such a good tool. I mean, you can learn a lot of things schematically about football through Twitter, but you can connect with a lot of great people through Twitter. And like you said, Coach, I mean, my big thing is just growing this game. You know, I, I, I'm not speaking at my own clinic, Coach, for a reason. You know, I want to I want to expose people to a lot of other uh, a lot of other people and and what they do great. And, uh, man, it's such a it's such a great thing. And. Um, man, our 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 um, state does a great job of of connecting, you know, each other through our state coaches association clinic, our Alabama football coaches association, and uh, the stuff that they do for our for our state. And then, you know, we have a, a a couple of group of guys that that put on the Alabama football chat every Thursday night. You know, uh, I'm having, they're coming on. Coach sure. Atkins and Coach Lumberg are great dudes, and they're doing yeah, they're a lot coming on. They're doing a lot of great things to help advance our game, man. And, and you know, just very thankful for those guys who who are trying to help and, and grow our game in, in our great state. Yeah, man. Well, got nothing but respect for Alabama football, Alabama high school football, and the University of Alabama and Auburn and everything y'all do down there. So nothing but love coming from Virginia. I'm fans of what y'all do and keep doing it. And, Coach, if there's ever anything I could do to help you, you know, I'm going to put this – um, out on Twitter and social media, I'm gonna tag you. I'm gonna tag your clinic, tag the high school football chat. Let everybody know that we got the goat coming on tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. That'll be 7 p.m. for y'all, and he will be live. Awesome. And he will be answering questions, but he doesn't want any. Hey, coach, can you go over the coaching points for mid zone, right. every position, and the running back? Mm -hmm. I mean, he he. That's a two hour clinic. Right. I mean he. He's he's amazing, Coach. So I appreciate you. Thank you. Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? Hey, no, I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you so much for having me, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. All right, take care. See you.